think the primary we should be primary way we should be hydrating is through our food. Like you should be eating hydrating foods. Wow. Because when you think about it, when you make juices with cucumbers and fruits and other types of vegetables and green leafy vegetables, et cetera, they create water. And now that is structured water. That's water that has a structure to it. That's water that has minerals, vitamins, et cetera, to it. But when you're drinking most typical water, it doesn't have anything in it in, in terms of health, but it has a lot of things that are unhealthy. So when you test the light like, natural tap water, natural tap water is, well, I won't call it natural, but tap water is going to have bacteria in it. It's going to have some pharmaceuticals particles in it. It's going to have chlorine in it. It's going to have fluoride in it. It's going to have a ton of things that are going to be very toxic to your body. So the primary way that we should be hydrating first is through our foods. And the example I always give people is when you eat a raisin, your body literally has to take that raisin and convert it back into a grape so it can be hydrated because otherwise it can't break it down. When it's in this dried state, no hydration in it. And just think about our bodies. Our bodies are roughly 70 to 80% water. And so when we're putting things in our body that are dehydrating us, coffee, nicotine, the list goes on and on and on, dehydrating foods, we're dehydrating ourselves. We're putting ourselves in a state of emergency because that's the number one thing after oxygen that, oxygen that we need. The number one nutrient is oxygen. Three to four minutes without that, life ceases to exist. Mm. The number one nutrient after that is hydration, H2O. So if you don't have water in your body, you're going to cease to exist. It's going to create low blood pressure. It can create high blood pressure. It can create other issues as well, constipation, on and on. So you got to hydrate with your foods first. Okay. And then after that, my primary hydration is coconut water. Okay. Um, we have about 200 coconut trees on the farm. Uh -huh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> take some coconut water right yeah, now. So we have about 200 trees on the farm. So, you know, I'm hydrating with the coconuts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why coconuts are the perfect sort of solution, pun intended, is because, you know, at the end of the end of the day, coconut water is a perfect water. Mm -hmm. It's inside of the coconut. It's protected from any kind of impurities. The second thing is, is that it's flooded with nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's flooded with not only the minerals that you need, because that's what makes water alkaline, the minerals. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying alkaline water, what makes it the pH go up is the minerals, the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium. That's what increases the pH of it. Okay. Now, the unfortunate thing is most people are buying alkalized water. Alkalized water is when they take tap water and add synthetic minerals to it that don't come from nature. But when you use coconut water, those minerals came from nature. And so that's why coconut water is great for that reason. But it also has healthy sugars, healthy fats as well, too. So that's why it's a perfect solution to the hydration problem. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. So how much spring water do you drink or is... So then I hydrate probably with two liters of spring water every day. Okay. Yeah. Two to three liters. Now, the the I think the, the going equation that they I usually give people is half your body weight in ounces. Mm-hmm. And so if I weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces a day, which is roughly three liters. But I, I'm also taking other things into account. I'm taking into account we were just in the sauna, so I need more. Yep. I'm taking into account did I have a lot of fruits today, which I did. Mm -hmm. I'm taking into account did I have some green juice or juices today, which I did. Mm -hmm. Those things are going into that equation too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's talk about food labels. I feel like this is something that we should have learned in school, how to read. <laughs> we learn how to read, but we, we, we look at, we don't ever turn around the package of food if we, you know, some people say we shouldn't even eat food in packages, but a lot of it always has a package on it, a code, even the fruits. What are some things that people need to know about food labels that you could share with us? I would say, man, when I think about how scary food is now, I just think people don't understand how scary food is now. Mm. Because then the reason why is because how we're defining food. Like if you go into the supermarket today, probably 80% of the foods that are in the supermarket today did not exist 50, 60 years ago. Like you couldn't walk in a market, a supermarket, maybe 60 years ago because supermarkets are a really new concept. So like say for instance, my great grandmother, if she wanted meat, 
she either had to have that animal on the farm or go to a butcher. You know, butchers are non virtually non-existent today. So it's important to know and understand that most of the foods in the supermarket are products, not food. And there's a difference between products and foods. Wow. Okay, because foods are one ingredient. Avocado, kale, a tomato, a sarasap fruit, like it's one ingredient. Okay. That's food. Uh -huh. Food products are a combination of not only food stuffs, but also the chemicals and our preservatives and the thickening agents and the dyes and the emulsifiers that they put in those foods to keep the shelf life. That's a product. Okay. So most of what people are eating are food products. And so that's that's the very most important concept that people need to get down when they walk into a grocery store. The other thing that's important is that, you know, I have a unique perspective because you know, I was a chemistry major. I was also a, a pharmacist, a clinical pharmacist in a hospital. So when I look at the food label and all of those words that sound like chemistry, I know exactly what they are. Okay. I know that some of them are not only in foods, but they're also in paint thinner. Oh my and God. And some of them are also in the same antifreeze that you put in your radiator. And so when I see the words, I know what they mean. And generally speaking, most people just aren't going to know what they mean. So the general sort of advice that I give people is that if you can't pronounce it or it sounds like chemistry, you probably shouldn't eat it. Mm. <laughs> it's a good rule. You know, and then the other general rule that I give people is that if it has more than five ingredients, it's probably not a good choice as well, too. And then the other rule that I give people is that when they when you see the list of ingredients, typically go from the highest concentration to the lowest concentration, meaning that that first ingredient is what is the highest concentration, the most of what's in there. So if you're buying spaghetti sauce and the first ingredient isn't tomatoes, then it probably stands to think that this is probably not a good <laughs> product, <laughs> you know? So like, that's really important. Wow. wow. And then uh, of course it becomes very complicated when you're looking at the serving sizes, because sometimes you go and it'll say, this only has five sugars, but it will have 24 servings. So then you got to multiply that five grams of sugar by 24. And that's how much total sugar you're consuming. That's how much, much total sodium, a salt that you're consuming. Mm. And it's important to know that that sodium is very different from the natural salt, like pink Himalayan salt. So those are just a few rules. It's great. That that that's all you need to know. I mean, that's, that's the F foundation is that'll save lives right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shift everything in, on your grocery shopping trip. Awesome. Let's talk about your new book, what made you want to write it? Because it's different from it's different. things that you've kind of kind of written about in the past. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. So my first book was Vegication Over Medication, which was a dope experience because it's essentially me living in Japan and all the knowledge I learned while I lived in Okinawa, Bloom Zone, and then traveling around the world, all the knowledge I got from herbalists, shamans, spiritual gurus, that th sort of thing to help people understand how to use food as medicine. And I was writing a whole nother book. Like the second book was gonna be about how food is literally being used to keep us addicted and to literally poison us. I was trying to write that book, but I kept getting writer's block. And whenever I get writer's block, I usually do something creative in the meantime so that I can kind of get stimulated. And I started writing the new book, which is Life is My Guru. And so um, I always always had this concept that as I was traveling around the world, I went to like maybe 37 countries in a span of like a year and a half. So I was really, really traveling a lot. And during that time, it was really a spiritual adventure. I was going different places like Bali. I went to Bali to meet Katut, who was the man who was in the movie Eat, Pray, Love mm. oh, in wow. Bali. And I actually got to meet him. Wow. He's a, he, was a, he was a Balinese healer, like a real Balinese, but I got to meet the actual Katut. Wow. You know, as I'm traveling and having these experiences, which were really some very spiritual experiences, I'm learning lessons. And not only lessons about my present life, but lessons about my past life as well, too. It's helping me understand life in a different way. Hmm. And so what I realized was that as I was in this space and time, I wrote the, I finished the book last year. As I was in this space and time that we're in and we're transitioning from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, hmm. and there's a human shift in consciousness that is happening. Hmm. What I realized was 
it was becoming very easy for me to write this new book, mm -hmm. Life is My Guru, where I was going to be sharing with people how I was pulling wisdom out of my life to help me understand what God or source was trying to sort of nudge me in the direction of my own personal evolution. I figured that considering where we're at in the space and time and the madness that is occurring yeah. in the world and what people really need is understanding what is happening. You know, what? why is this happening to me?